Why are we doing Dirt Ride 2.0 now? It was always going to take some time for us to look at what we wanted to build on from the first one, to get out there into the wild, to do our research, to speak to the community, to find out what improvements they wanted against what improvements we wanted. And that's all come together, so now's definitely the right time. The way we approached the design of Dirt Rally 2.0 was to look at Dirt Rally 1, look at everything there, look at what we could improve, what we liked, what we didn't like, what the community were on board with and what they didn't like. And then it was a process of refinement from there. Everything that you're familiar with is back and better. And then we had to introduce features that we thought were worthwhile additions and wouldn't distract us from our core focus, which is the on-track experience. We wanted to take our time to make sure we got it right, and here it is. Hi there, I'm Ross Gowing. I'm Chief Game Designer on Dirt Rally 2.0. Hi, I'm John Armstrong. I am a real-life ride driver, eSports World Champion and now I'm working with Codemasters on Dirt Rally 2.0 as a rally consultant. It's great to work with a team that's so passionate about what they do. Everybody's dedicated to making sure that their part is as real as it possibly can be. We're not afraid to make a challenging rally game. We're not afraid to give people a authentic experience, which is often really difficult. We're attempting to recreate how great Rally is in Dirt Rally 2.0 by listening to what it is that people in our community love about Rally. It's the way the crowd's moving around, you're catching out the corner of your eye as you're driving around. It's the way the surfaces of the road are changing. It's the way around every corner there's a different challenge. The improvements we've made from the first Dirt Rally are wide-ranging, to be honest. Everything that you're familiar with is back and better, and then we introduced features that we thought were worthwhile additions and wouldn't distract us from our core focus, which is the on-track experience. We've improved the way our environments look, the way we create them, the characters within those environments. We've improved the way we model our cars, and we've created a whole bunch of new cars and environments. We've changed the way we model the surfaces, the tyres, the way they interact with one another. The handling's been pulled apart, tweaked, changed and put back together again. We have improved ways to play the game and a couple of extra modes as well. The car interacts with the surfaces and the road a lot more. Some of the things that have changed are the grip levels at lower speeds, how that slips, allowing the car to rotate. We've done a lot of work with the aerodynamics to make sure the cars feel good over jumps and how they fly. That means that they react well to the road surface as well. When you're driving in the wet, you need to be a lot more careful with your inputs and that includes how much steering input you put in, throttle and brake inputs. You just need to be a lot more gentle and do everything more carefully. The competitive nature of Dirt Rally 1 was something that we really wanted to build on and enhance for Dirt Rally 2.0. All of the classic community challenges with the daily, weekly and monthly leaderboards is back. We've also got a few new variations on those for people to challenge one another. We also have a bespoke time trial mode where you'll have no distractions other than going and setting as fast a time as possible. And then after launch, we've got a few plans for what we want to do with esports and how we identify the best players in the world, how they can really prove themselves. And we also want to work with the community to hear how they think the best players should rise to the top. The 
think the difficult thing about preparing yourself on the start line is being able to push as much as you can from the start without making mistakes. It's quite daunting in that respect and especially if the conditions aren't how you like them, say there's fog or really bad rain, you sort of have to force yourself to get over that fear so you can perform at your best. It's always like a compromise between trying to be as fast as you can on the stage and also being consistent because it's very easy to go too fast and crash so you just need to be careful and not go over the top because at the end of the day you're trying to win the rally, not just win every stage. Whenever you have no mistakes in an event, you just build your confidence up and up until the point where you're on the limit. And when you're there, you kind of know you don't want to push too much more or you will make a mistake. It's draining in a lot of different ways because it's very physical and it's also mentally draining as well. Focusing for that length of time in really high temperatures inside the car and you're sweating quite a lot so you need to be physically fit. But yeah, when you get to the end of stage you can either feel relieved or you can feel really pumped up and full of energy. But it just kind of depends on how the stage went and whenever it's going well it's pretty effortless and the best rallies I've done is when everything just comes together and it takes very little effort at all. Yes, you're not going to get injured in Dirt Rally 2.0 because the risks aren't the same but you still need to have the same approach as real life and be consistent to get a really good result through all the stages. And also with tyre wear and surface degradation, you're up against new challenges, so it's going to be even more difficult than ever before. In real life, the driver and co-driver would drive through the stage and the driver would give his perception of what the stage would be and the pace notes that he wants and the co-driver would write it down and on the second pass through the stage the co-driver would read the notes back to the driver and then any changes that the driver wanted to make he would tell the co-driver again and that's how they're made in real life. For Dirt Rally 2.0, Phil Mills is making the pace notes through recce videos that we give him and then he sends the notes back to me and I check them over for any adjustments that I think should be made. Yeah, we should probably add about that wall there for this part. Making sure that the pace notes are correct for the stage, checking to see if there's anything that can be improved or adjusted, and then I put them into a script so they can be implemented into the game. Tire choice is something that's new in Dirt Rally 2.0. It's a big factor in rallying because it's part of the strategy. You may have two or three stages in a loop before you get back to service, which means you need to select a tire that is going to perform and last that full loop of stages. Depending on what condition you face, you would choose a different tire compound and pattern. For example, if it was a dry day on tarmac, you would select a soft or a medium tire but if it was raining you would select a wet compound which would give you better grip in wet conditions. You would select a soft tyre in cold or wet conditions because it's a softer compound meaning it will heat up faster and reach peak performance in a colder environment. Whereas if you selected a soft tyre when it was too warm it would wear out very quickly. You would select a hard tyre if you wanted a compound that would last a full loop of stages and have good performance throughout. A hard tyre would take longer to heat up, but once it does heat up, it will provide a more sustainable performance throughout a long stage. When we've been talking to real rally drivers, they've been telling us about their tyre management strategies and some of the guys have incredibly complex ways of planning their weekends. We wanted to step back ever so slightly from there and introduce it in a format that players would be comfortable with. Looking to the future, that's something we'd be looking to build on and evolve based on players' feedback.
Even though you can drive down the same stage a thousand times, these stages are going to present a different challenge every time. We've got surface degradation, which is where the surface will evolve depending on where you are in the running order. We've got various different weather conditions, day, night, rain, very different driving experiences in each of those. So there's plenty to keep the challenge fresh. Surface degradation is basically how the track evolves over the space of a rally. Whenever the first car competes on the stage, there's quite a loose surface on top. And with every car that passes over the stage afterwards, it digs away that surface on the top and actually creates ruts and divots in the road, which makes it a lot more rougher for the people that are at the back of the field. I would say the optimal run time with surface degradation is probably around fifth to tenth place because you get that loose surface sweeped off the top with the first couple of cars, but it's still not really rough that it's ruining your car, ruining your rhythm. If you start first on the road, you're going to suffer from a lot of loose gravel, which makes the car move around a lot more. You're going to struggle for traction, and that makes it really hard to put in a flowing stage with a good stage time. You would probably set your car up like you normally would, optimal and as fast as it could be. If you're last on the road, you're going to come across a really rutted road. It's almost like the train tracks. You have to stay in the tracks, otherwise you're going to bounce out of them and go off the road. It's also really rough on the car because you're dug down into the hard bedrock of the road and that's going to be sore on components like suspension and track rod ends. You would probably raise the right height so you're not crashing out on the bottom of the car as much and you would probably make it a little bit softer so it could deal with the more bumpier road that you experience.